How's it going, everybody? Andrew Zarian here, Wrestling Observer Live. We're here every day, Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern. 1 p.m. on Saturday with Jim Valley and Sundays, 6 p.m. Eastern with me. I think I said 1 p.m. Eastern for Jim Valley. It's okay. Listen, I'm very New York today. You could tell. If you're watching this, I got my FDNY shirt on. I may be, right after this show, I may be running to City Field. Possibly. We'll find out. I'm not too sure, but I'm ready. I'm ready to just run in that building for the playoffs. Guys, a lot to talk about today. Obviously, the return of Bray Wyatt, the long-awaited return of Bray. Listen, at the end of the day, you know, a lot of us said only WWE would be able to do this character. Only WWE would be able to afford Bray Wyatt. And that's the reality at this point, right? I I don't, you know, we're going to talk about this. I got Matt Ryan coming in from Catalyst Wrestling to join me to talk about, you know, this is a very interesting situation because every the build was based upon him debuting, and now he's debuted. And now what do you do? What, where do you go from here? Dying to get your thoughts on this. Guys, message me. Let me know what you think of this. This is a really big topic for wrestling today on Sunday and probably tomorrow because Monday Night Raw is in, is in Brooklyn, so I'm sure they're going to do something there. John Moxley's new AEW contract, we're going to be talking about that. New responsibilities and roles, and possibly, possibly, Renee Paquette going to AEW. Very excited for that. Big fan of Renee's. Super talented in what she does. And a whole lot more. I mean, it was a very interesting week. This is the moment that people waited for, for a while. And there's a lot of speculation that we wouldn't get Bray tonight, too. Or last night, I should say. And we did. So we have all this to talk about, obviously, and everything else happening in pro wrestling, everything happening in AEW, WWE, GCW, and of course, Catalyst Wrestling, because he's going to get in the uh, the plugs in as much as he can. I could see him just uh, doing signs right now to me. Guys, Wrestling Observer Live on Sports Byline. We'll be right back after this. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live Sunday edition. Andrew Zarian here with my tag partner for the night, Matt Ryan, Catalyst Wrestling. What's going on, Matt? Not much, man. I'm really excited to be talking pro wrestling with you. Really excited uh, what happened last night and what's the road ahead for the WWE. Because you said it at the start of the, the, towards the end of the last segment. Where are we going from here? Where is all of this going? And I think that's kind of a question for multiple matches and multiple people on the card from Extreme Rules last night in Philly. Yeah, you know, and I'm going to ask this question to you because I've asked at every pay-per-view post Vince McMahon. Was this a Vince McMahon production? I see. I think it's a you're always going to have those elements of Vince McMahon production because he taught Triple H the business. He taught him how to produce a wrestling show. And everyone in that company is working off of muscle memory as you learn and build out a new way and a new style. It didn't feel as aggressive with the camera cuts. It felt like the show had a better flow. Much better. There were some things on the show that were a little clunky. I think this is people trying to find their way. And I think this is an opportunity for producers to really learn how to establish finishes. Cause there was a Kobayashi Maru in at least two matches last night because you can't end it. You can't bury somebody. And this is talking about edge and Finn Balor and carrying cross and Drew McIntyre. You're building to Beth Phoenix coming back. You ha- I-, I think that was the most logical finish for that I quit match, the way that they went over, the way they set things up. Well, because Karrion and had then to go with- over, right? I mean, that, that's yeah, the Yeah, Cross had it. to go over. Yeah. yeah. Cro- you so, needed to establish Cross, and you needed to establish the Judgment Day as a, in, in, their, in the match with Edge and Finn Balor as a really dominant, destructive force. You needed to establish them as heels outside of the fact that they have Dom Mysterio who is hated by the internet oh for my reasons. God. Dude, it's that mullet. It's the mullet. I, I Mullets are in again, which is depressing. Mullet, but dude. <laughs> Let's start off with the show. The Brawling Brutes, which was yeah. one of my, I, I would say, my favorite match of the night. Uh, I can't believe how into Sheamus, Rich Holland, and uh, Pete uh, uh, Butch, I guess. I, guess, I think uh, he's Pete Butch Dunn. Pete Butch Dunn. I'm okay with that. He's a butcher. He's a butcher. Sheamus, oh, they, they Rich went. Holland, and Butch defeated Imperium, Gunther, Ludwig Kaiser, and Giovanni Vici. Giovanni Vici does not match the uh, the name along for uh, for Imperium. Well, I thought this yeah, was great. No. He, yeah, no. Uh, 
they had the I liked Imperium wearing different kind of gear. Uh, someone on Twitter said it's the Arn Anderson Dangerous Alliance era gear, which I'm a big fan of. Anything Dangerous Alliance. Uh, anytime you put those six guys in the ring against each other, you know you're going to get violence. It is the most WWE version of 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 strong style or that that really hard hitting UK style we've seen yeah. in progress over the last few years because well all of these guys work that style. They well, listen, understand it was that it was a, it was a it was an NXT out of 2017 style three on three or a stable match. I, I dude, yeah. I, I watched this and I was like, you know, Sheamus is a great example here, right? Because he has been he he came in an era which was kind of a nothing time for WWE. Not a lot of stuff was going on. He was very much liked by Hunter and Triple H really wanted to make this guy work. Uh, did it work? Did it not? I, I, I actually, that's a great question to ask. I don't know if Sheamus worked uh, as, as a whole total package, right? He's always been a guy that's there. He had a lot of negativity associated to him as being, you know, he hits too hard or whatever it was, you know? But what a rehab think, of the character over the last, I don't know, couple of years. I think the Cesaro team up really helped them. And, and now, you know, he's in this, he's in a pretty uh, like stable. And the crowd was wild for this 17 minutes and 50 seconds this match went. And they loved it. You know what I think the problem was? Sheamus has been in the, it's the same problem that Drew McIntyre had. They both were system guys. They were in the, they, they spent time obviously in Europe and, you know, making their bones there, but that was like a truncated period of time as opposed to the decade plus they've been in the WWE system. Yeah, Drew had to leave I to think, become, you know, become yeah. who he was. So yeah. very and, interesting. And Sheamus, and Sheamus was one of those guys, I'm sorry for cutting you off on your go own ahead. radio show. No, 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 go ahead, Matt. Go ahead. Sheamus is a guy that has always been there. If he was in Japan, if he started in Japan, if he took the road that someone like a, a Gunther took, just became the guy in Europe, became the guy known for what he does in the WWE, hard strikes, really snug offense, big pres you know, a big character, big personality, and also like the 1-800-FELLA stuff. Like there were things where it wasn't, yeah. he wasn't his most authentic self. I did like King of the Ring Sheamus, but that's just That was me. good. No, this is my favorite one of him. We also got SmackDown Women's Championship. Ronda Rousey defeated Liv Morgan in an Extreme Rules match. There were, you know, there were a couple elements here that I liked in the match. I liked that Liv was a little bit uh, more unhinged, I guess. It fit the, the the mode of the match. But, man, that baseball bat spot <laughs> did not look great. No, I mean, why no, not do a rubber bat, you know, at that point? I don't know. Uh, there, I, there was a couple, a couple wonky things in here. Uh, they really tried, they got, I don't know. It was okay. The match was fine. I, I didn't, but there were a couple things that kind of took me out of it. it. It felt a little clunky. Um, I liked the finish because they showed Liv Morgan smiling yes. because it was just more of like selling that part of her character. Um, certain people on the internet, um, who are from where we grew up denigrated that match and denigrated Liv Morgan's entire run. I'm not necessarily someone who thinks it was a bad run. It <clears throat> didn't have enough time. I'm biased towards but, Liv. I, I very much yeah. enjoy uh, Liv, so I'm a little biased. Uh, you know, I listen, man, I saw her drop a pizza and eat it in NXT at that, at that <laughs> Garden Theater show. And after that, I think it was, you know, maybe a little bit, maybe a little bit I fell in love. You know? I, who doesn't like a degenerate from the Northeast? You know, you drop Hi. the pizza, you pick it up, and you eat it. What's the big deal? Uh, that should be the name of our show, The Degenerates of the Northeast. <laughs> I think That's so. That's what Sundays are. Karrion Cross defeated Drew McIntyre with Scarlett in a strap match. Um, Scarlett in her best sable gear. Very sable-esque. Yeah. Uh, you know, they're an incredible act together. Mm -hmm. You know, and how could they not be? They're married. They know each other really well. They protect each other really well. Um, I, I'm very glad that Karrion Cross has survived that, that, that terrible, uh, gimmick that they put him in and he left and now he's back and, you know, he's coming back as Karrion Cross, very authentic to who he is and who he was, uh, everywhere he's wrestled. What did you think of the match though? That is the question. Now, strap matches are very difficult to make really good. We've seen it done in AEW in a very positive way. Uh, I thought this was a good match. I thought they did a good job. I just, 
it was you know between this ending and the ending of um of the Finn Balor and Edge match, it was too many outside interferences. But I guess you know it's an extreme rules thing, so whatever, anything could happen. Anything can happen, and also these pay per views create Kobayashi Maru situations to where in certain spots it's unwinnable because these are supposed to be blow offs. These are supposed to be matches that are. That's what get you know, quote unquote, gimmick matches are supposed to be. They're supposed to be the end of the feud. The yeah, but end this was of the, the beginning rivalry. of the feud. This was the beginning. Yeah, this is yeah. this is the middle part. Like this is yeah. the middle part for at least two or three of the feuds. Live and live and Ronda don't know where that's going to end up. Don't know if they're going to move to something else or keep that through line going. But we know, you know, Survivor Series. It's probably going to be Edge and Beth versus Finn and Rhea or Dom and Rhea. Some like one combination yeah. of Judgment Day. Or another, Carrying Cross and Drew McIntyre. That one's gonna burn out. That's gonna burn for a while. I wouldn't be surprised if that gets involved in war games in some way. Oh, like they get involved in like being one of the five. Like, and if it's a bloodline yeah. versus who's its match? Listen, this, like, this match was for was for Carrion at the end of the day. Yeah. You know, you had he had to win. He couldn't lose, and you can't have and he couldn't be a clean pin in the middle. So you had to have an interference. Uh, the story here was that Scarlet, I guess, pepper sprayed Drew in the yep. eyes. And the reality is, uh, you know, this was kind of playing on that on that that, that the fireball that didn't go anywhere. But listen, it, it's a logical ending. You got pepper sprayed in the eyes. You're going to you're going to go and you're going to continue fighting and win. No, probably not. So they went 10 minutes with this. I, I don't know. I, I, I personally I didn't think that. Karrion's first match back should have been a strap match. I think I would have well, I would have much more enjoyed. My brain just stopped with the words. I, I lost all the words that I had in my head. Uh, I, I would have much more enjoyed it to be, you know, to see him in some sort of singles match. But you know what we are going to do? We're going to continue talking about extreme rules because there's a lot more to talk about. Going to a quick break here on Sports Byline Wrestling Observer Live with me, Andrew Zarian. We'll be right back after this. Wrestling Observer Live, Andrew Zarian here, Sunday edition of the show on Sports Byline, joined by Matt Ryan. Hi. How you doing, Matt? We I'm got doing, uh, I'm doing good. Yeah, I know. Me too. I'm feeling good today. It's a beautiful Sunday. Mm-hmm. I love Sundays. Sundays are a great day. Me too. Uh, you know what Sunday I love the most? Sunday, November 6th at 4 p.m. at Strong Rope Brewing and Red Hook. Catalyst Wrestling returns. Alex Shelley versus Darius Carter and a whole lot more. Tickets available at CatalystWrestling.com. God, I hope you're happy. Oh, I'm ecstatic. Oh, God. It's a good good thing you're shooting me from a medium shot. (laughs) Bianca Belair defeated Bailey in a ladder match. 16 minutes, 11 seconds. You know, Bailey looked really good in this match. Um, Yeah. This was, you know, she she hasn't really done a lot of this since coming back. She hasn't really had too many opportunities to do this. And I thought Bailey looked great. Uh, you know, they worked very hard at this match. I actually enjoyed this match a lot more than a lot of other people. I don't know. Uh, did, did I miss something? I really liked this match. I, I liked it. Um, I think Nikita Lyons, who's a very, um, like react, like there's a lot of reaction to Nikita Lyons anytime she's shown on screen. So yeah, that might've so. shaded it a little bit. Um, I feel like people don't take some of these matches with the gravitas as uh, some of the others. And also it was coming off. It was in a weird spot on the show because it was between the strap match and between the, the double main events. Like the show is, it's a smaller show and every match is a gimmick match. So when you go from a, a a stipulation match, like a strap, it's three stipulation matches in a row. Yeah. yeah. It's strap match, ladder match, I quit match. But I think, I think it, it, it's, you know, when you prepare, when you tell the audience, like, listen, everything is a gimmick here, right? Like everything is a gimmick here. Uh, This whole thing is going to be a gimmick match. This whole pay-per-view is a gimmick pay-per-view. You know what I did not say? I very much love that opener with Paul Heyman. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, MG, I, I well, saw you, the cold you open saw part. it, right? Our producer. He's getting his microphone ready. There he goes. <laughs> Opener? Yeah. You mean the uh, opening segment? Yeah, the uh, the one that the went cold open. To, uh, yeah. Yeah, the cold open. The cold open. The I thought it was great with Paul. Extreme. Yeah. Yeah. How do you spell extreme? Ah. He did his uh, Paul Heyman one nine hundred run for ECW uh, hotline voice, which I absolutely loved. Uh, I, you know, the interference at the end, yeah, it was too much, right? But 
uh, okay. You, you know, you, you had to do, but to I thought the match was fine. It was a really good ladder match. It was a good ladder match, and when the entire stable is predicated on having the odds, having control, of yeah. course there's going to be a run-in. And also, it's, an, it's a way to show how strong Bianca is as a character and physically, literally, how strong she is as a person. I think some of the timing might have been off, but there's 9 million ladders around ringside. You've got to make that run. Everything is moving at such a quick clip. The, the fact that they were able to pull the finish off, the double KOD and all the stuff onto the ladders, like for the first time, any of these four women on the main roster are working a ladder match, especially Bianca's first ladder match. I, I thought it was very good. Like yeah, I thought you're it was, listen, very NXT style. You know, you could tell this, there's Hunter's fingerprints over all, all over yeah. this entire show. Double main event here. Finn Balor defeated Edge in an I quit match, went 30 minutes, 29-39. They went 30 minutes with this match, and, you know, there were moments that the crowd was really quiet here. They, you know, they yeah. knew that the match isn't ending in 10 minutes or 15 minutes, so they let it go. Uh, you know, Edge is great. Edge is great. Finn is mm -hmm. fantastic. The story of the match was the interference of Beth Phoenix uh, Beth Phoenix interfered in the match, took out uh, a bunch of people from Judgment Day, big stare down between Rhea Ripley and her, which was very cool to see. You could tell that's going to be a program. And the story of the match was Edge would not quit, right? Edge yeah. was not going to quit. However, they forced him to quit with the, the threat of concertoing Beth Phoenix. And... Yeah. That. She and Edge quits, and what do they do? They concerto uh, Beth Phoenix. Second headshot of the night, by the way. Yeah, they, they shot that really well. Very well the, they shot it, The yeah. way they do those concertos, like when, when they did the angle in Brooklyn it, before 20, in 2020, they did a re I, I was there for that because of a work thing, and it was really good. Like, I was there live for it, but the way they shoot those is very well done because it puts over the danger and really hides what the chair is actually hitting. Yeah. Because that clang, if it was head on skull, if it was chair, skull, chair, it would be a different sound. But thank, thankfully, they know how to shoot that right. They know how to do what they're doing. I called the finish right around the 10-minute mark. You saw it coming. I saw it coming because... This is not the end of the angle. All of the word around the water cooler in professional wrestling, a.k.a. Twitter, is that Finn's in line for a huge push, and that Finn, makes let me, sense. Let me just tell you this. Finn is in line for something, okay? Because, um, uh, you know, the the story came out that, you know, th that Finn's in line for it, and I asked a bunch of people, and the answer that I got was, yeah, you know, if there was ever an opportunity for guys like Finn, including Finn, mm -hmm. obviously, but guys like Finn... To be, you know, elevated to a level that they were in the NXT rankings. This is the moment. And it's very obvious that they, they are grooming him to become a major contender again. And it's good to see. You know, this is the first Universal Champion. He won that title. I have I I don't even remember. Maybe I knew, but I I'm gonna say I have no idea what the what the long term plans were here or if there were any. But it was an opportunity that was given to him in, in WWE, typical WWE fashion. God forbid some, some catastrophic event happens because now you're not getting that opportunity back again. Uh, yeah, they are going to push him, and they should be pushing yeah. him. He's a fantastic, fantastic wrestler. And, he's a, he, and, you know, and the reality is, no matter how great he was in Japan, he's a system guy for them. Yeah. He, he came up through NXT, yeah. and he's over with the audience. Like, Very the entrance, much. the personality. The Judgment Day is over, despite people having their opinions on Dom Mysterio's mullet. Uh, I like the finish because it was the most logical finish that kept prote everybody yeah. protected. And so, it helps set up for ne what's next. What's next. So, obviously, there's going to be a what's next in this program. Main event, Matt Riddle, Seth Rollins... In a fight pit. Now, this was not the same fight pit we had in NXT. This was a very different it's a fight cleaner. pit. It was a cleaner fight pit. It was a fight pit with uh, less of an octagon, but a a a well, hell no, in a, a cell without a ring. top. I guess a hell it, well, in a cell the, without a top. The original fight pit was two cages or just one. I could swear to you, it was one cage, and it just had like the the flat on the top for like 
you know, like in UFC, maybe a little flat. They had a pla- no, they had a walkable platform. It they always had have, a walkable yeah. platform. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was just, it was better produced. It was, oh, we're giving LED this to lights. WWE. Yeah, the zhuzh. Like, it had they a lighting it. rig on it. You know, that's a very Northeast term, by the way. Yeah, zhuzh. And I use it constantly, and people have no clue what I'm saying. And same with my wife. My wife uses zhuzh regularly. Zhuzh it up. You got to zhuzh it up, and they did zhuzh it up. How do they zhuzh it up? The podcast special, I call it. <laughs> A little LED here, a little LED there, an LED strip here, and bam, there you go. You got a brand new Seth going. It's like that SNL sketch, put it in a wine snifter, a brandy snifter. An obscure uh, mid-90s SNL sketch. Love it. Uh, Daniel Cormier, uh, special guest referee. This was fun. He did a good job. He did a good job. Listen, he's... They did a very good job at him. They, there was a spot that they did, and, and David Bryan on Observer Radio this morning called it. I He said it was a the Tunny and something spot where it was an old school spot. The referee, uh, you know, the referee is going to count, and he's just waiting too long to count, right? And mm. the spot came from that, the boxing spot, Tunny and whoever. Uh, I thought that was that gave Seth a little bit of an out, right, because he was checking on Riddle. Uh, I thought it was a good match. I thought it was fine. I thought Cormier did great. Uh, Matt Riddle, at the end of the show, he's exiting. Lights go off. Obviously, we're going to talk about Bray in the next segment because it's a lot to talk about, Bray. But what did you think of this match? I thought it was very well done. It was very well done. Um, to be completely honest, that was during a very anxiety riddled inning uh, at the have, Met Padre game no I was idea. watching as well. You have no idea how um, I, I feel like I was crying all night. You know, like like sobbing. I was a sixteen year old in a breakup with with my first and only love, and I feel like she's about to break up with me, and I'm crying because I'm watching this happen, and I'm like, oh, what's gonna happen? And then the Mets rallied, and I was fine. But yeah, I was very stressful was, night. Ang- anxiety McGee was me <laughs> on, on McGee, Saturday right. night. Um, yeah. And I'm going to be Anxiety McGee tonight as well. Um, follow me on Twitter at Matt Ryan Yells to, to just watch me have emotional breakdowns during baseball games. But well, I like, in like the an match. hour. <laughs> in yeah, like 30 minutes. In like an hour from now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like t- less time it takes to, to make a sandwich. Um, when it came to this match, I think it was different than the other two fight pits. It wasn't. As hard scrabble, Wait, we had pride style. Pits? I thought we only had uh, one. Ch- you know, Champa, the second one. This is the third fight pit. Because oh, the first yeah, one was Ch- Thatcher and Riddle. And then Champa Riddle, had and then, one, yeah. Yeah, Champa had one. And then this one. So I think this one, It's I think this is the first one in front of an audience. I'm not, I'm not sure. Possible, My brain yeah. is terrible. But this match was good. The finish was great. Um, It did the job, but I think... It a little bit of the air got taken out of it because everybody was waiting for what happened after the credits. That was the thing that drove the show, that got everybody interested, that had me, you know, lo- watching it while watching the most important Met game of the year. Like the, everybody was waiting for that, and I think that took a little bit off the show because everybody was waiting for when that was going to happen. And it kind of just muddled things up. But they did a really good sh- job with this. But I know that when we come back here on Wrestling Observer Live, we're going to be talking about what everybody else has been talking about for the last 24 hours, the return of Bray Wyatt. Uh, I'll give my thoughts. Andrew obviously will give his thoughts because it's his show. But we want to know your thoughts as well. Be sure to let us know in the chat. Let us know. Across social media, you can follow him at Andrew Zarin. You can follow me at Matt Ryan Yells. And we will have more for this in just a moment. This is Wrestling Observer Live on Sports Byline. Do not go anywhere. I mean it. Wrestling Observer Live, Andrew Zarian, Sunday edition here on Sports Byline. Matt Ryan joining me. Bray Wyatt. Yeah, finally returned. The long-awaited return of Bray Wyatt. We saw all these vignettes. We saw all these uh, immersive, augmented reality clues happening. Uh, before before we go into what happened, I just want to tell you, a lot of people are annoyed with the Bray Wyatt gimmick, right? They're, they're annoyed by this. It's too spooky nonsense. It's a lot of, uh, you know, uh, television stuff going on. Do you know who freaking loves this? 
Who? My kids. Yeah. Do you know who else? Dude, this is all their who? friends. All yeah. their friends. My so my my son is in kindergarten. My daughter is in first grade. Obviously, wrestling has gone on in this house forever. Uh, they they are not wrestling fans. However, they are big Bray Wyatt fans. They absolutely love Bray Wyatt. All their friends are really into this too. I, 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 you know, I like to see that because sometimes like we're in this void of like overanalyzing all this nonsense, man, you know, you want to build a, you want to build a following, you want to build a new yeah. audience, which they really, they, they are in the process of building a, an audience again. This is how you do it. You get, you, you know, set five years old, fifth, uh, you know, five years old, six years old, seven years old, eight years old. This is when you g get a hold of these kids. And then now they're lifelong wrestling fans. You know, think about the stupid stuff that we liked. A Dude, giant the Undertaker. hot dog man with, 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 in yellow. <laughs> uh, a crazy face-painted muscle guy shaking the ropes and just snarling. The, uh, an undead cowboy. So this is all, I mean, you, you know, you kind of look parallel booking. I don't know. You know, I don't know how much Barry Wide compares to The Undertaker in 1991. But this does do something. And what it's doing is it's capturing an audience that normally would just channel surf or, or skip it. My daughter this morning went on YouTube in the living room and found it because she wanted to see what happened. That's the job to sell tickets, to sell views, to get eyes. Wrestling is not just for us. White dudes in their mid thirties. I'm sorry, Andrew, you're 26. But for <laughs> the one thing that I think we lose sight on is that the WWE is the biggest tent in the neighborhood. They're drawing. They're yeah. trying to get everybody in the tent. And speaking as a promoter, I can't. Every match can't be what I want in wrestling. It no, can't listen, because I'm not. I, you want I'm my, not selling you, tickets to me. I'm selling tickets to people. Like listen, you're, I, you're not, finding an audience. I don't hide what I like, right? Yeah. I, like, okay, this is. I mean, uh, this is fine. Like, I get it. I totally get it. Is this my wrestling? No, my. You know, I I generally like wrestling. So AEW uh, at times appeals way more to me than WWE, but it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, you got you got to fill in the blanks here, and you gotta you gotta grow an audience, and you gotta try different things and they're doing something different here so after the fight pit match the lights go out michael cole does his uh wonderful by the way the the logo show ending has finally arrived on the main roster i was gonna that say. is the most valuable signing from nxt <laughs> that, that the the sign the sign off logo at the end the most triple valuable H hold, shaking they're doing the Triple H photo with the Chiron guy. <laughs> <laughs> the Chiron, yeah. Triple H, someone needs to do that. A Triple H shake photo, but it's just the Chiron that says, you know, WWE, you know, it's the, the, the copyright 2022. Uh, they, do, they do the sign off. Michael Cole does his best. We're off the air, right? There's nothing happening here. And you hear Bray's voice. He's singing, I got the whole world in my hands. Then they do a spotlight. The puppets have come alive. Abby the witch. Uh, Huskis the pig. Mercy the buzzard. Mercy the buzzard. Uh, 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 Clarence the bunny. No, uh, no. <laughs> uh, James the marsupial. <laughs> Sally the snail. <laughs> Griffin the giraffe. Rodrigo the badger. Rodrigo the badger. So they all show up, right? The live puppets show up. They show an image of the Fun House, the Firefly yeah. Fun House, and it's like the upside down. Great timing, by the way, with Halloween and, and, and mm -hmm. the Stranger Things stuff and the, the uh, augmented reality game that they did. Very much tied into modernization of, I guess, you know, spookiness. And I thought, by the way, I thought that they did a great job top to bottom. This was the, 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 the most um, contuitive, I guess, contuitive? No. Um, yeah, intuitive. Intuitive. That works. Uh, uh, that works. A process that they've had with, when it comes to like a v reveal, right? That Jericho, the save us Y2J thing. This was yeah. it on steroids. And they did a great job. Here comes, you, you see the Firefly Funhouse. The, the, the puppets are dead. You know, they're covered in cobwebs. And there's a door at the entrance and the door opens. And here comes Bray in, his, in a new mask. And he takes the mask off. 
and he says something. I forgot what he said, and he blows out the candle. And then they do that crazy thing, and his logo's yeah. upside down. This is his logo. Ready? Right? Isn't that the logo? <laughs> It's upside down. I think it's uh, a dead fly or something. Dead whatever. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so listen, they did it. Yeah. It was over like crazy in Philadelphia. That crowd ate it up. And now the big question is, what do you do tomorrow? Yeah. Um, I have one issue with it. I wish they use feet. I wish they use white rabbit. Like, uh, yeah, I wish copyright. that, that I know, I know they were able to do it in the house, but th they're spending so much money on Metallica songs, like throw Grace Slick some cash. Listen, uh, uh, Hunter's a big Metallica fan. What do you want? So am I. I love Metallica, not, but if I he's not feel into like, the hippy dippy stuff of Jefferson Airplane. Yeah. All right. Well, maybe, maybe it's because they, maybe because they're star people at Jefferson Starship are fans Jefferson, of, Jefferson of AEW. Jefferson Starship. There you go. Because, what did I say? Jefferson because they Airplane? gave AEW the right. No, no, no. It's, they were five different band names. We don't need to go into the yeah. etymology okay. of Jefferson Airplane, Starship, what have you. Uh, they did the uh, Orange Cassidy's theme song. So there might be, that might be where the Wednesday Night Raw Wars really went between Starship and, uh, possibly an airplane. Th they won it. Yeah. I, I don't know where you go from here because he just showed up. That was the thing I was thinking about heading into this pay-per-view is he's going to come out in the last segment, but it's not going to be Seth. Can't be Riddle. Who the hell is he going to feud with? Who the hell is he going to feud with? Yeah, or or is we'll he even out. feuding? Will he be in the ring? Like, there's so many different aspects to this that you don't know that are and, also and what, exciting. what version of Bray is this? You know? Yeah. We don't know. We're going to find out. Very exciting stuff. Also, tomorrow, the season premiere of Monday Night Raw takes place in Brooklyn at the, Bar at the Barclays uh, Center, arena, stadium, whatever you want to call it. Not a fan of that arena. Just saying. The sight lines for hockey are some of the worst I've ever well, seen. Well, you'll never have to see hockey there again. I think. Let's go Rangers. Yeah. Um, but... Yeah, uh, I like I like the venue for wrestling. If you, it's the steepest building I've ever Very been steep, to, and I don't, don't like it. Yeah, yeah. I get I get um, a spell of the dizzies when I'm walking up those <laughs> stairs. I'm gonna tell you, we're gonna get Johnny Gargano and Austin Theory. We're gonna get United States Championship match. Bobby Lashley facing off Seth Rollins. Seth has to win this. A DX yeah. reunion. Obviously, uh, a Bray Wyatt sighting. I assume we'll get. Because that building will be very upset if they don't get Bray and a whole lot more. Very. They won't be the only here. ones mad. They will not be the only ones mad there. So, very interesting stuff. We're going into a big Monday Night Raw with, uh, you know, they're trying to pop that number. I know that USA has been working on new material, uh, which is interesting. New mm. promotional material for them. So, that that's going to, I'm curious if they show that tomorrow. But, Monday Night Raw lineup, three, three things so far. The DX thing is the big reunion. That's the big. How uh, many scissor me story. daddy ash chants do we get? Oh, I'm curious about that. Yeah. Uh, you know what? They should let Billy show up. He's allowed. <laughs> Look at that guy. He's a big stud at 60 years old, almost jacked to the gills. Ah, look at a big mom. Ah. Big, ah. He's so strange. vascular. He's so vascular. He's so vascular. Let's talk about uh, John Moxley here. Yeah. Signed a five-year deal, contract extension with AEW. We'll be working exclusively for AEW and other international partners including New Japan Pro Wrestling, extending his role in the company by mentoring and coaching talent. Also, it is believed Renee Paquette, the very talented Renee Paquette, uh, will be heading to AEW. This is according to Fightful. WWE sources believe Renee will soon be working with AEW. I think Renee is a, um, is a great addition to that yeah. roster. Uh, she's very talented uh, as... I mean, I think everybody knows. I, I'm very fond of Renee. I was fond of her when she was Renee Paquette on TSN. And everybody yeah, was going no. crazy that she's going to WWE, and they thought everybody thought this is the move. This is the best move to do. Um, you know, makes sense. Her and Moxley it does. Travel, you know, they could travel together, and they could do a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, very excited for that. Moxley as a mentor and talent. Uh, I'm very excited to see what that does. Also, yesterday... 
Nick Gage defeated John Moxley in a career versus title match at GCW Fight Club Night One. The finish had AEW star Stokely Hathaway and Morrissey, big cast, getting involved with uh, Morrissey choke slam and Moxley through a barbed wire glass window pane. Gage went for the cover, but Moxley kicked out. Gage then scored the win by hitting three pile drivers and a choke breaker. All right. Um, a great moment for Gage. Yep. Great moment for GCW. They got, they kind of got okie doked because uh, the showboat was double booked, but they're back inside tonight. So is that um, that's what happened, right? They, they yeah. They, so the showboat double booked the venue, and they got forced to go outside because it was a kickboxing tournament happening. Yes. Okay, but now they're inside. Yes, they're in. Okay. They're indoors for this show. Okay, they were literally in like the parking lot, on, on in Atlantic City, like on the. It, it could not have been very pleasant to work that show. Little chilly, yeah. little chilly. little chilly. Guys, uh, we're gonna go to a break. This still, uh, t- I want to get your thoughts on uh, tales uh, from the territory really quickly yes. when we get back, and uh, some extra stuff. Wrestling Ooh. Observer Live, Andrew Zarian here, Matt Ryan, Catalyst Wrestling. We'll be right back after this on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live, Sunday edition, Andrew Zarian here, Matt Ryan. Final few minutes of the show. But I want to get your thoughts on this. Tales from the Territories debuted. Episode one went up. It was about one of the most crazy territories, and that's Memphis. Yep. What did you think it, of it? It went... It was really good. It went ankle deep. Um, anytime you get that collection of people in the room, you kind of need a fact checker um, because <laughs> it's telephone, telegraph, telewrestler. I, I love all the personalities they Gaged interviewed. Gaged his or eyes had. out. Scratched well, that, his that mouth. That allegedly did. Cut his fingers off. Like, what are you talking about, Jerry Jarrett? <laughs> No, Mario. That Mario Galento story is actually <laughs> mostly real. Uh, it, like that whole situation broke down that way. He had lost his eye at one point. Um, the <laughs> I like the idea. I like the concept. I really love the roundtable aspect of it. But it's really hard to tell that whole story in forty-five minutes. I feel like Memphis could be its own series. I feel like. I can't wait to see if they get into the Georgia War. Like there's so like this year's the 50th anniversary of wrestling on TBS. Oh wow. And I think that there's a lot of stories 2023 that could be or 22. 22. Like mm. this is around this time yeah. is the 50th anniversary of wrestling on TBS and that was around the time of the first Georgia War. Like this is when wrestling as we know it started really to take shape. It started in Australia with Barnett in the yeah. 60s. But that style of territory TV really started kicking up in the early 70s. And, you know, Jim Barnett in Georgia with the war really set those things in motion. Would love to see stuff like that. But this season's got a really good lineup. I just wish it was longer. Yeah, me too. Guys, that's it for this week. Uh, Listen, had a blast. I'm, I'm going to City Field now. So I'm at the door. For Matt Ryan, myself, we'll see you next week on Wrestling Observer Live. See you next time, guys.